All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So I was thinking, most cars on the road these days look the same. They're either an SUV of some sort, or an estate car, or a people carrier, or a hatchback. But they all sort of look the same. Nobody seems to be brave enough to take any risks. Before a car's made, it goes through committee after committee after focus group. There are endless board meetings with people who look like Svenja and Ericsson, pointing at graphs and pie charts. And then in the end, they decide to not take any risks at all and just make a carbon copy of something else. So that seems to be the norm to ensure that nothing weird gets made. But occasionally something very odd can slip through the net. And it doesn't get any weirder than today's car because today I'm in a Mercedes R-Class. And I think honestly somebody must have slipped something into the coffees at those board meetings. You might be thinking, that's not weird at all, it's just a people carrier. Well, it isn't, it's only a six seater. You might be thinking that it's just an SUV but you'd be wrong again, because although they're four-wheel drive, you wouldn't want to take one on a trek through the Alaskan tundra. It's not an estate car either, because the boot's not very big. So what is it? Well, it's this weird estate sort of wagony thingy-majig. I don't really know either. It's neither one thing nor another. But what I do know is it's very comfortable. You get six seats. The middle row seats are these two big captain's chairs. You don't get sliding side doors like you would on a people carrier or a minivan. They just open like a regular car. So the model I'm in today is a 2007 R320 CDI, which uses a 3-litre V6 turbo diesel which produces 220 horsepower. It's linked to a 7-speed automatic gearbox. This is the best engine choice to go for in my opinion because you get more torque that you can shake a stick at and you get 220 horsepower and it's still quite sensible on fuel. You'll average 26, 28 miles per gallon. They use this same three litre diesel V6 in a whole host of cars. Not just Mercedes, but Jeeps too. And it's quite a reliable engine. It's chain driven, so there's no timing belts to change or snap. The only downside here in the UK, it's in the highest tax bracket, so it'll cost you 550 pounds a year to tax. If you can find a facelifted R280 diesel from 2009 onwards, then you'll save some money on tax because it manages to slip just under that threshold so you'll only pay £300 a year, not £550. All Mercedes R-Classes are automatic, they use a 7-speed auto box. They all have this column mounted gear shifter which does free up this centre area and, well, it's cup holder heaven. You've got cup holders, storage compartments, an ashtray here. It just makes this area much sort of, much more open, gives you more space. With all six seats in the up position, the boot is surprisingly small. For such a big, long car, you'd expect it to have a bigger boot, and it really doesn't. Although, because it's not as high up as the ML, it does make loading things into the boot much easier. Reliability-wise, as was quite common with Mercedes in this era, they do suffer with the odd electrical glitch. I mean, right now, for example, it's telling me that I've got a brake light bulb out, and I don't. Also, I've never had a Merc from this era where the parking sensors work. They always seem to fail. Mechanically, they were quite strong, so it's nothing that's going to leave you stranded, but it's just the odd, irritating, silly little warning message that you might get. To drive, it does feel sportier than a big SUV. You sit a little bit lower down, and it's got a lower centre of gravity, so it doesn't feel like a big, wallowy four-wheel drive. The surprisingly little body roll. It's got plenty of get-up and go, thanks to the torquey diesel V6 and the seven-speed auto box. Chain that feels pretty quick, actually. And the seven-speed auto box changes very smoothly. But there's no escaping the fact that this is a big tank of a car. If you drive this round town, you just never forget how big it is. If you see a little space outside your post office, forget about trying to parallel park this. This thing's that big, you'd need something the size of a bus lay-by. So it's very big and clumsy round town, but once you get it on the open road, it comes into a world of its own. You can pack this with people and things and then drive to another country and you'd get out feeling quite rested. The interior still feels quite luxurious. I'm not a big fan of the suede or the Alcantara or whatever they call it, because over time it just bobbles and looks scruffy. This one's 12 years old now and you can see all the bubbles in it. I also don't like the steering wheel buttons that Mercedes used in this period, because over time the top layer peels off and what you're left with is sticky and gross. But forget about that, the rest of the interior is finished very well. You get nicely stitched leather everywhere, you get lots of extras and everything's sort of finished quite well. I've got heated seats, 
We've got a big comfortable armrest here. The steering's pretty good. It's on the light side, but it's not too vague. I've got a nice soft leather steering wheel. Styling wise, it is very odd, but I don't hate it. I quite like the rarity value that you get with the R-Class. If you have a quick look on Autotrader now, there are less than 100 for sale in the UK. So it's not a car that you see every day. It does remind me a little bit of a Beluga Whale. If you can get past that, what you're left with is a luxury car at a bargain basement price. The R-Class was very expensive from new, but you'll be pleased to hear prices have dropped like a lead balloon. And now you can pick these up here in England for about £3,000. So for £5,000, you'll get a nice one. And that's an awful lot of car for the money. I would recommend going for the diesel too. I know there's a lot of negativity at the moment about diesels, but for this kind of car, it still makes perfect sense. You could also buy a V6 petrol or a V8 petrol in the R500. And they also did, which I think remains the silliest AMG car ever made. You could have actually bought an R63 AMG. And I don't know who they were aiming for with that. You have to be a little bit mad to lust after the R-Class anyway. But if you find yourself wanting an R63, then you really need a straight jacket and a padded cell. So to sum up, no, it won't be completely trouble free. You'll have the odd irritating warning message. And nobody will know what you're driving, so you'll have to explain what it is to everyone you meet. But if you can overlook those two things, if you're looking for a large, luxurious family car and you don't want a boring Toyota Verso or VW Touran, it's not a bad option. They're very cheap to buy, they're quite sensible to run, and you do get an awful lot of car for your money. So there are worse things to buy. So thanks once again for listening to me waffle on for 10 minutes. I appreciate your support, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already, and I'll see you next time. Cheers guys.